We're very excited to present to you today uh, from Leipzig to the world, study, the study abroad experience with HHL. So we are here um, to share some information with you, how you can, well, make the best of your studies and, um, you know, include a very international experience as well. Um, what we're going to do today, I'll take you through the agenda. So we'll introduce, or I will introduce all the speakers that we have here today. Um, and then following that, I will be handing over to our International uh, Relations Department. They will tell you a little bit about um, what services that they provide to HHL students. And then we hand over to our speakers. Um, these are HHL students who have actually been on a study abroad um, experience and will tell you their story, um, where they went, how it was for them. And then in the end, we have a little Q&A session for you. So if there's any questions that you have left, that you want to ask um, that we didn't answer during our uh, chat here, then that's the opportunity for you to ask those questions. But without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce well, two of the important people here on this call today. We have um, our international relations managers here with me. Um, so that is Julia, who is um, the uh, well, the head of the department, and then we have Federica here as well. So for the moment, I'll hand over to you and I'll let you introduce yourselves. My name is Julia Podaki, and together with my colleague Federica, we're the international office at the HHL. We're taking care of you who are planning to do a study abroad and the, the exchange students from our partner schools that are coming to Leipzig. I will be the contact, the main contact point for you because I'm taking care of the outgoing students program. And my name is Friederike and I'm responsible for all matters regarding our international exchange students. We receive around 100 exchange students per year and I help them settle in Leipzig and um, yeah, settle in at HHL. Fantastic. Thank you very much, ladies, for your introduction. And um, before we move on to the um, to the, the main topic, I would like to bring your attention to those lovely ladies, uh, myself being one of them. Um, these are our HHL program consultants. So if you have any questions about uh, the programs at all that we offer at HHL, and um, these are your uh, your contact people. So there's Jana who looks after our full-time master in management programs and the full-time master in entrepreneurship as well. We have Julia, who uh, looks after our part-time uh, master in management students. Myself, Ellen, who um, well looks after the full-time MBA program and uh, Stephanie, who looks after our part-time MBA students. Um, yes, so you see our contact details there as well. So if there is ever a question about the program, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to assist you. Okay, so now this is it from my side. So I'll be handing back over to Friederike and to well, Julia um, to speak about the International Relations Department and their services. And um, yes, so I'll be back with you later on. Um, but for the moment, I'll be turning my video. Julia, I'm handing over to you. Thank you very much. So whenever you have questions concerning an international experience, studying abroad, broadening your horizon, we will be the experts and your main contact points. HHL is a truly, um, truly international university. So if you're planning an international career, it is really the place to study. For our full-time master students, everybody goes abroad. But even for the part-time students, you get the option to do a study abroad term in many different countries. And if you want to go further, you could even do a double degree with one of our partner schools. So it is a very international chance that you get while doing a master's at HHL. But even if you don't, HHL has a really international campus. There are lots of exchange students around. We are based in a very big and fast and the fastest growing city in Germany. So you could even have some 
exchange at home while it's studying at HHL. Well, as I've already mentioned, for the full-time master students, everybody goes abroad. It is a very essential part of the curriculum. But for all the others, it is a bit different. If you're a part-time student at HHL, you will get the chance to decide whether you want to do it or not. I assume that all of you who are here are interested in doing the study abroad. So we will help you to accommodate the study abroad term within your studies. For part-time students, there are different options. Apart from the regular study abroad term, you could also do a summer school with one of our partner schools. HHL has a vast network of partner universities. And each year we have about 100 students who are going to the partner schools and about 100 exchange students coming to HHL. So speaking about the vast network of partner universities, there are around 140 partners all across the globe. So yes, we have partnerships with very big and renowned players like Imperial College or NYU or Chicago University. But apart from that, we have other partners that are prestige, boutique universities where you would have this more familiar atmosphere. For example, we have a partnership with Incae in Costa Rica that has a close relationship with Harvard Business School. We have other partners all across Europe. Many of our partners are based within the Erasmus network. We have lots of partners in Asia. So no matter whether you want to stay within Europe or go as far as you can, we will definitely find you a partner university that fits your needs. Yeah, um, I would like to talk about um, like the, the services we offer um, for, for our students. Um, so we are happy to give you individual advice on your plans on going abroad and um, advise you also on the requirements uh, for an experience abroad. Of course, we will support you in the application process uh, for a usual for a regular term abroad or for a double degree. Um, most of you will have a high flexi flexibility on integrating the term in the program structure. Um, and um, yeah, most importantly, we will help to guide you through our, let's say, jungle of partner universities. So um, yeah, we will give you recommendations and um, you will be able to, to read reports about uh, our partner universities and um, based on that, uh, make a decision on where you would like to go. And also very important is that we uh, will support you in applying for scholarships, uh, for example, the Erasmus or, or any other DAAD scholarships that is applicable. And also we will support you in case of any problems which you might face abroad, being it like academic problems or yeah, we will be here to, to help you and uh, try to find solutions. So you can count on us. So yes, it can be really overwhelming seeing all the different partner schools, but we will, as Freedom Ricky said, guide you through the whole application process and talk about possible universities for you. Most importantly, we have a great database with all reports. So every exchange student who goes to a partner school has to write a report. And this is probably the most valuable resource. So you will get experiences from other students who have studied at the university before. So this international ecosystem at HHL is a really valuable resource. Going abroad means that you do not only, that you're not only an HHL student, but you become 
a student of a thriving network environment on a global level, you will be part of the international exchange community. And be sure most of our partners have been partners for a very long time. We have very reliable and trustful partnerships. We know the universities where we are sending you to. So now you got a little idea of what studying abroad means. But yes, there is a whole process of applying, of being nominated at the university, of sending an application to the university, and so on, before you actually go abroad. But don't worry, we are here to support you when selecting the university, when filling out your application, and so on. Once you are an enrolled student, you will have a info session. So we do info sessions for all different degrees at HHL. And no matter whether you're a full-time MSc student and you will definitely go abroad or a part-time student, there will be plenty of chance to talk to us. Now you might wonder, how does it work? How do we allocate a student to a specific university? Well, we do have lots of options. As I said, 140 universities all across the globe. But we have decided in order to have this broad diversity to never send more than two students to one university. This will allow you to leave your HHL bubble. Yes, it is really nice to be among HHL students, but if you go abroad to study abroad, we want you to get a really different experience. So students get allocated at the partner university based on the GMAT score or the entry test and the current GPA. This is a fairly simple ranking. And once you know what university you're going to, at many universities, you can decide whether you want to do an MBA or a MSc study abroad. This is a really nice option for all of you because MBA students are allowed to take MSc courses and vice versa. For MBA programs, of course, there is usually some work experience required, but especially for part-time MSc students, it can be really interesting to go for a MBA abroad to get a different idea. So once we've done all the nomination and application process, we will get you in contact with the partner university and then they take over, they will inform you about all the necessary things before going abroad. And once you're back, unless you have any problems abroad, Usually it doesn't happen, but as Frederica said, we will always be there if anything happens to you. But once you're back, we will take over again. We will transfer your grades and credits back to HHL to make sure that the study abroad term is well recognized at HHL. So this is the this was the most important information from our side. But as I said, the most valuable resource are the exchange students who have already studied at the partner schools. And therefore, today we have invited three speakers who have recently completed a study abroad term at one of our partner schools. And as far as I know, they've had a really interesting and great time in Korea, Marvin, Anna in Canada at McMaster University and John at Keenan Flagler Business School in the United States. So I think I would now like to hand over the word to Marvin. Marvin, would you share some of your experience with us? Yes, of course. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, as Yoya already said, I'm, I'm Marvin. I'm part of the MSc 22 program. I'm currently in my flex time, it's called at HHL, where we can do our internships or, in my case, proceed with the master thesis already. 
And yeah, my last semester then starts in mid of March. So almost at the end and yeah, happy to talk about more, uh, more about my semester abroad, which I've done in Sejong in South Korea. But before I go into the, the what's and the how's, let me just quickly tell you why I chose South Korea in the end. So personally, I never really had any experience with Asian cultures before I went there. I've been a few times in the US and other parts, but it was mostly Western oriented. So therefore, I really had this tunnel vision when it came to Asian cultures um, and the backgrounds that they bring into professional and private scenarios in the end. So therefore, this was my opportunity to finally dive into the Asian cultures. And I wanted to do that by, firstly, I wanted to go to China, but I mean, you all know it, there's been COVID and there's been a lot of regulations that haven't really allowed me to, to go to China in the first place. So therefore I had to switch the, yeah, the country in the end because I didn't want to basically yeah, do my whole semester abroad in, in Germany and then especially attend the, the lectures with such a big time zone difference. So therefore I just decided for a different country and then landed on South Korea, which was also recommended by other HHL students whom I spoke to in order to get a better understanding of where I could go. So let me start from the beginning. What did I do in order to get there? How were my first few days? And then also how was, was my experience overall with the city, with the country, with the university I've been to? And what did I do there? So that's roughly the structure I want to go through today. So getting there is for Europeans not difficult, but there's a bit of work involved, obviously. So you have to, in the beginning, apply for It's called the D26 visa. Um, I'd recommend you to do this at least a month before you start traveling to the country, because this just gives you the flexibility that you need in order to have all your documents ready before the flight. So in general, I'd say it normally takes two weeks until they reply, but since it's quite a bureaucratic endeavor, take the time you need. There's always a few things that they wanna get back to you on. And for example, the um, HHL, HHL has helped me a lot with really getting the documents ready and then also discussing some misunderstandings that I had with, for example, the university when it came to the starting time. So especially Yuya has been a great help for that. So then, yeah, once I had all my documents ready, I wanted to obviously go there. So I took a flight from, in my case, it was London, but you can also get some flights from Germany, obviously, without having those yeah, annoying stops in between. And then 15 hours later, roughly, you can land in Incheon, which is the airport in close to Seoul. It's on a yeah, half island, so close to the city, but still a bit far away. And then in the end, um, I took the bus to Sejong itself, which takes roughly two and a half hours more from, from the airport. So regarding the accommodation, I had two options. I could either live directly on the dorm or I could, which was my personal uh, choice in the end, uh, live in an Airbnb or another rental apartment because there's a few downsides with the dorms themselves since it's quite common courtesy in South Korea to live in a dorm with another partner. Um, so it's a shared apartment in the end, one room, two beds, which was not the thing that I wanted to, to do while I was there since I really embraced my personal space in, in such scenarios. I decided against that option and I yeah, lived in an Airbnb in the city center. Obviously the more expensive choice for me, it took like, it cost like I think 800 euros per, per month still manageable, but definitely, I think, at least double the amount that you would have to spend in the, the dorm itself. So Sejong itself is, well, it's, it's an artificial city, so it has been built up to, to um, host the government officials that moved away from Seoul due to, for example, Seoul being too close to North Korea and many um, yeah, offices have had the threat of what would they do in case of an invasion from North Korea. So they moved a bit more to the South to be on a more secure side. That's basically why Sejong itself exists. And yeah, you can, and that's one of the downsides obviously to, to Sejong, you can directly tell that the city itself is not perfectly 
accommodating for, for students since it's mostly about office workers. So there's a few restaurants, but there's no direct scene where you go for, for clubbing or any bars or anything like that. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you choose the university that I went to, which is the KDI school. Um, but still, the city itself also has a few upsides, obviously, since it's not as traffic -y as, for example, Seoul directly would be. So if you want to travel to a country, which, I mean, obviously, Asian countries are a bit more on the more populated side. So if you want to still have this sort of trade-off of having less people and still having sort of your, your own space, time to, to enjoy outside without really, yeah, diving too much into too many other people and being in traffic jams all the time, then Sejong might be a good opportunity for you to do so. So that's about the city. Um, South Korea directly has a, a quite nice temperature, a quite nice climate in the end. So for my time, I was there from September until December in the end. And while the season beforehand can be very, very warm, so there's yeah, temperatures from, I'd say, 40-ish degrees, in, in the highest, um, in September to, no, to November, it's a bit better. So there's still very good sunny days and uh, I'd say roughly like 20 to 30 degrees all the time. So you have a longer summer than you would have in, for example, Germany, which is quite a nice thing when you're in mid of November, still outside at the beach and you don't really need a jacket or anything like that. So that's also perfect temperature for, for a semester abroad there. So now let's move to the school itself. KDI School, Korean Development Institute, is a school or university that focuses a lot on public policy management. They have a really high reputation in that field, and there's therefore many, many people who actually go into the um, into uh, go to Sejong for for studying there since they work at governments and really want to go for, for the academic um, fields of public policy management in the end. So therefore, uh, one of the first uh, sentences that I also learned at that school was, hi, my name is Marvin and I'm a government official. Like that's one of the language uh, sentences I learned in Korean there. Uh, so that already gives you a bit of a glimpse into what, what sort of people you will, you will meet there. Um, in general, class sizes, I'd say, range from 30 at the minimum size to 100 at the maximum size. So it's, it's a bit bigger than at HHL, what you would uh, experience here, but still on a manageable side. So it can still be interactive courses and you still meet a lot of people and don't really feel the anonymity of being stuck in a big class group. Um, yeah, what else? So, the students are really international, but from other parts of the world than you would expect in a semester abroad in, for example, European countries. So there's been many, many Asian and African citizens who, who are doing their photo masters in, in South Korea. And that is super interesting for Europeans in gen, uh, especially, since you really get to know different, different nations than you would normally meet in your standard Erasmus semester abroad. So one, one downside though that I've experienced at my university in particular was that there's a low amount of semester abroad students. So therefore it's a bit difficult since for example, there's only four of them uh, as it was in my case. And that makes it difficult if you wanna, for example, travel or go somewhere over the weekends since the students themselves who are pursuing a full-time master are obviously having a higher workload. So they need to spend more time on yeah, doing their studies than just being with the uh, people from the semester abroad who, who wanted to just enjoy the culture. Maybe let's talk a bit more about my courses at KDI. I took three courses. I only had to take two though, as uh, I was required to do 15 credit points for HHL, but I decided to do a third one as well, which was also then partially accredited to me for, um, for my, my master's here. So I took the Korean language and culture class, which is definitely my biggest tip and biggest recommendation for everybody who wants to go to Korea, since this is the best way to learn about the culture and also 
sort of dive into the the language i mean the language itself i could talk uh, for for hours about that it's really difficult so you won't learn the language in those three months but it at least helps it helps you to yeah survive on a daily basis besides korean language i also took two other courses which were entrepreneurship and population and development entrepreneurship because it's uh, connected to my deep dives here at hhl and population and development because i just wanted to learn more about the culture that um, and the country that I now was living in for for a few months. So that was really just a good course to to get up to speed with um, economic economic development trends that that are happening in, in other parts of the world, basically. Yeah, so as I've yeah, sort of implied already, the workload was for me personally, definitely less. It's from, from the style similar to HHL. So there's of course group works with presentations. I had to do one exam and also one paper, final paper in the end, but it was still manageable. And I has, had plenty of time to do other things like extracurriculars. I was part of the sports club, the football club. Uh, also I took part in the TEDx initiative that they had there. So you can really do a lot in your time because you don't really only get stuck on yeah, finishing your deadline for which paper you are currently doing. Maybe let's talk a bit more about difficulties and uh, challenges that also led to, to culture shock there. One thing you have to keep in mind, and that's also why I emphasize so much on the Korean language course, is that you need Korean skills. English itself is definitely not enough if you want to live in Sejong or Seoul or any other South Korean city since the international development has only really started with K-pop in, in South Korea. So there's a lot of people who don't really have too much knowledge in other languages, and therefore they just simply don't feel comfortable in talking with you in that language. So you have to always cross that barrier in some way. So in the beginning, I had a lot of help from, for example, my university, also from, from people who were just kind enough to, to support me and medi mediate between the, uh, for example, the, the bank that I had to, uh, to apply my, my forms for, for the credit card. Um, but then in the end, you, the translation apps that you find on every phone are also very, very helpful. So that's just something that you need to keep in mind, which is different from other Asian cities. So for example, in, in Japan, it's already a different development there. You might find it easier, but if you want to go to South Korea, learning Korean is definitely mandatory in order to really embrace the whole experience there. So since my time is almost already over, uh, let me just quickly go into two things that I wanted to talk about, social activities and my, my travel plans. So social ex um, activities, they're a bit different from what you would expect in, for example, Germany. You don't really have any, any pubs or bars because in Korea, it's common courtesy to always have something to eat while drinking. So just keep that in mind. But then there's plenty of options for that. And you can definitely have a good time with, with your friends and uh, fellow students there. Otherwise, as I've featured before, there's sports clubs. There's also uh, the yeah, national famous uh, activity of uh, doing karaoke, which, uh, which is quite nice. So there's definitely different kinds of activities that you can do with your fellow students. And then since South Korea itself is quite close to, to other countries such as Japan, you can also travel a lot in that time, which I've done. Uh, so I've been in a few different places in, in South Korea. I've been from the northern part, the, close to the um, demilitarized zone to, to North Korea. I've been there. Uh, which was truly eye-opening to, to see that. I've been also in the southern part of South Korea, uh, Jeju Island, which is sometimes called the Korean Hawaii. Uh, you, you can go on the, the volcano there. It's like a three-hour hike to, to get up there, which is also really, really cool. Uh, I've been to other bigger cities, the, uh, such as Busan, which is the, the second biggest city in South Korea. Obviously, I've been to Seoul and many, many other places. So the country itself also offers a vast variety of options that you can yeah, basically go wherever you want in, in those few months and really enjoy the country through traveling. Besides that, Japan was one of the favorite, one of my highlights, I'd say. I've been to Tokyo and Kyoto, 
Tokyo, Mount Fuji, uh, obviously also Disneyland since so it's close there. So, so you can also travel out there. I've done like a 10 day uh, travel to, to Japan, which was also really, really nice to, to dive into yet another culture in the end. And after my, my last deadline was over, I yeah, cherished it a bit or cheered a bit and um, yeah, flew on the, uh, on the Philippines for, for a weekend to, to have yeah, 30 degrees in December, which is also a nice way to, to end the semester abroad. Okay, so I think I've talked a lot now. Uh, I hope I didn't overstretch too much. So I think now it's time for me to, to hand it over to um, Anna, I think. And yeah, if you have any other questions, just let me know. Um, happy to, to answer them later on. And yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Marvin. Um, yes, my name is Anna. I'm a part-time student at HHL. So I'm working full-time. So my experience in choosing um, the term abroad was probably a little bit different than Marvin's. Um, my study abroad term was optional. So I decided to do an extra study abroad term. And um, I decided to do that because um, I really wanted to have um, the full-time study experience because uh, working full-time and studying part-time can be quite stressful. So um, I decided to uh, go abroad after I finished all my classes. Um, and I can tell you, I did not regret that. So if any of you are studying part-time, it's a good job uh, option um, to go abroad. Um, I went to McMaster University in Canada. Um, the main campus is located in Hamilton and the MBA campus that I was studying at is Hamilton is in Burlington. Um, so a lot of the students' activities are around those two cities, but I decided to stay in Toronto because it's only an hour away, um, very easily accessible by public transportation. Um, so I decided to go for the big, big city and um, stay there. Um, maybe just a few more words about the university. McMaster University is also a really international university, so you'll be there with um, a lot of other exchange students alone in the MBA program. We were around, I think, 20 exchange students, mainly from France, Denmark, and a few from Germany, also very different universities and backgrounds, so very interesting to talk to them and study with them. But also McMaster University itself is really international. So there were a lot of other students from India, China, um, Egypt, Africa. And I think um, next to those, of course, a lot of um, Canadian students. So it's a great opportunity to make some international connections. Um, McMaster also offers like a part-time option in their MBA classes. So you'll be studying with not only full-time students, but also students that are working um, next to their studies, which is really interesting to talk to them, to get to know um, the Can Canadian uh, um, economy and the Canadian businesses. Um, yes, yeah, so overall, a really good experience and a great networking opportunity. I, I had to do three classes while I was there and decided to do very practical classes that had a lot of exercises and case studies in them. So I decided to go for a project management class, which was um, really interesting because we learned a lot about management tools, which are, if you're working or all of us are planning to work at some point, so um, it's great to get those infos and get to know the tools. It's um, it's really good um, in your work life. Um, and I also decided to do a strategic management class, which was really interesting because uh, like a lot of the HHL classes, we had many case studies about um, Canadian businesses and their strategies in the past and maybe strategic shifts that happened in the past years. So that class was really, really interesting. And we also did um, an airline simulation where we um, made up an airline and managed um, it for a few quarters to see how the business will develop with uh, different strategies. Um, and my last class was a principles and leadership class, which was, again, very interesting, completely different from the uh, first two classes, very interactive um, with a lot of um, videos of other 
leaders and case studies and um, overall a good study experience, I would say. If you are used to HHL classes, you'll be fine there. Um, the classes are not more difficult than HHL classes. I would say the workload is a little bit higher just because um, the Canadian um, school system works a little bit differently. So I had to do a lot of small assignments rather than one big assignment. Um, yes, but I think it's manageable, especially if you come from HHL, I think um, you'll do good. Um, but maybe also to the interesting part of um, traveling, getting to know people and the overall um, study experience. Um, so as I already said, I decided to live and stay in Toronto, which um, might make it a little bit diff more difficult to get to know the other exchange students because most of them stayed in Hamilton. Um, but nevertheless, a lot of the Canadian students um, stay in Toronto. So it's a great chance to get to know them. Um, and um, make great connections um, with people from Canada that you can always go back to. Um, and I really enjoyed staying in Toronto. Toronto is an awesome city with a lot of things to do, very, very good restaurants, very cool bars and clubs, and also um, a lot of nature, surprisingly. So um, Toronto is right at Lake Ontario, so we have the waterfront, but you have a lot of parks and also um, many travel opportunities. Um, since Canada is quite big, it might take you a while to get somewhere, um, but um, Niagara Falls are really close to Toronto. So that was um, a trip I took um, very early on. And then in December, I also decided to take some trips to uh, Quebec City, Montreal and Ottawa, which was also very interesting because um, Ottawa no, Quebec and Montreal are the uh, French-speaking parts of Canada. Um, so I can really um, recommend getting to know Canada a little bit and the Canadian culture and also the Canadian history. So overall, a really, really good experience. Um, I would think that um, you can take with you a lot of great experiences that um, will help you in your personal and professional development. And um, I also really enjoyed traveling by myself, um, which was awesome to get to know um, other people um, in the other cities. So um, overall, I got to know a lot of great people at the university, but also a lot of great uh, people during my travels from all over the world. So if you're interested in getting to know different nationalities and different people, um, I think Toronto is a great place to be because the city is also very international with a lot of different backgrounds um, and a lot of different businesses that are there. Also a lot of uh, universities, so you will have no problem getting to know people there. But maybe um, just a side note for the people that might be thinking about um, staying closer to the main campus in Hamilton. It is a lot smaller than Toronto, so you don't have as much to do, but you have a lot of student activities. So the international office as, at McMaster will um, take good care and um, organize a lot of different meetings from international dinners where you can taste different cuisines over we watched um, the soccer games um, when the World Cup was on or like they organized camping trips, um, but those were quite early in August. So I couldn't do them because I arrived in September. Um, but overall, a lot of different things to do in Hamilton as well. So I think whether you decide to stay in Toronto or Hamilton, um, it's a really, um, both of it is a good choice. And I think... I already went through my whole, most of my points. I hope I wasn't too fast, but I would um, give over to Ben uh, Wang or John. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Um, maybe it's go to, go to my part. Um, um, maybe I just a uh, short introduction about myself. Um, I'm a full-time MBA from HHL, M22. I'm originally from uh, China. So, um, so I think this could be a reason like why I choose a semester exchange in the US because uh, I think this is my first time to visiting the US because um, even as a, a my, my background is tech 
product manager. I learned a lot of news from the US, but uh, I really want to see, like personally, to uh, add science to see what kind of uh, culture there and the kind of uh, what's the industry information there. So that basically could be the one reason. And also as a, as a, uh, as the MBA students, so it's not a mandatory, unlike the MS students, so you have to do the semester exchange. So for me, uh, personally, I think the, the important reason I would say it's where um, it will expand my, uh, the, the, personally, it's expand my culture experience, obviously. And the second time, I just want to know more about their, uh, the industry information, especially for the internet in the US. So basically, this is why I choose the uh, uh, US, and also uh, I'm a, also a basketball fan. So I know that UNC, the most uh, the famous person from this university, is Mike Jordan. So I saw the basketball, uh, the, the the NBA, since I was a teenager. So uh, to to visit in the year, it's a part of my um, a dream, I would say. So uh, above all, so this is the reasons why I want to come there. So during the whole process, um, so basically I get a lot of uh, reports uh, from the alumni. Uh, they already done in their uh, previous years. And also uh, I talk with them and to know their experience and also get the information about how to, uh, to, to go through all the process. So um, I think it's very useful like, to, to get a reports from let's say last year or the year before last year. So you get enough information how to prepare and also how to uh, pay attention in the details like the living locations and also um, the visa issue, visa things, etc. Um, so um, after arriving in the US, uh, maybe I want to talk about the location there. Um, so basically UNC is located in the in Chapel Hill in the North Carolina. So Chapel Hill is like a so basically it's a college town. So most of this are uh, residents are students. So you can imagine that it's almost a uh, you can see all the people almost in their trannies. So, so, so this is basically the location. And also um, the transportation is easier because there's a lot of uh, the bus system there. And also for, for all the people there, the bus uh, for free, it runs from Monday to, uh, to, to the weekend, the weekdays to the weekends. So you don't need to worry too much about the transportation. But the, the good, the, if you want to have a like, driving license, you rent a car, it's much easier for you. Like it's not like in Germany, it's easier to go to the supermarket. In the US, maybe probably it's very far away. So I spend so much time like go uh, doing the groceries because uh, I think um, even you driving a car like takes like five minutes, but uh, you uh, rely on the public transportation is fine, but it um, definitely take more time, like one hour. And also um, the weather there, I would say it's, uh, it's very nice. Um, it's all the sunny days, so most of the time uh, it's, it's sunny, but sometimes it's raining, uh, but usually in, in, in the night. So you don't need to worry about the, trans uh, the the weather there. And also it's very warm because I spent two modules there. So from August to the December, I remember even in the like end of the November, it's still very warm. So I even saw the people wear shop there. So the pretty um, warm places and also, uh, uh, because I mentioned it's also a small town, um, it's a college town, so so basically it's unlike big cities, but uh, it's a uh, have abundant nature like plants, trees, even you can see the deers just behind the horse. So um, of course, um, almost everywhere in the autumn, so um, uh, it's very uh, tranquil. So um, uh, for uh, for the green color, and the. Um, um, the next step, maybe I talk about some about the university because um, I think UNC, as I mentioned, is a public university, and also it has uh, more than I would say um, seventy thousand, um, um, like including staff and students there. So, um, so basically, it's super large, which means it has a lot of activities there, especially for sports um, like basketball, soccer, uh, football. Um, and also they have a lot of facilities there. So I watched a lot of uh, NCC basketball because they have a good reputation and also has their like drivers um, with the Duke, which is a uh, very close by UNC. So uh, I watched like three or four NCC, NCAAs game there. 
um, with their, um, it's pretty fun because you kind of belong to the, the part of the, the whole um, community. And also um, uh, UNC had a, like basketball had very high king, uh, high ranking um, in NCAA. So um, really we, we, we win a lot of times. So it's a, much, a lot of fun. And also um, you can like play uh, like sports um, like by yourself. I, because my classmates also play tennis uh, almost uh, uh, twice a week. So uh, if you like sports, I think it's definitely a good place to, to go to the and in terms of the business school, uh, it's like part of UNC, which is located in the, the south part of, of the campus. It's in a small hill. Um, uh, I think uh, it's a um, pretty um, uh, small, um, uh, uh, like big school there. So um, you can have like roughly uh, one, uh, 400 um, students there. I mean, in, uh, also um, including uh, account graduates. MBAs and part-time MBAs, separate and exchange students there. So um, uh, it's a, it's a, obviously they have a lot of like facilities like HHL. So um, you can uh, have a study room and also you have a, a, like gym. So um, all the facilities covered. And also as an exchange students who starting the year, so you have a lot of uh, people from different nationalities, people from the European countries, from Germany, from uh, Latin America, from Asia, China, India, Japan. So it's uh, pretty international, um, like HHL. So you can make friends with people from uh, across the, 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 the country. And also they also have a lot of uh, like clubs there. So you can join like Latin American club. If you have interest in the Latin American culture, and also you can join the, let's say, um, the Asian business, a club if you want to um to know more about uh, what's happening in the asian countries so even like living in the us but they also can meet people uh um from the different uh, like countries and also to get the information and experience the culture from the different uh, continents i think it could be the good um the positive thing like not only american culture but also you can experience the different culture which the class is bring to you um and the I would talk about some um, uh, academics, uh, basically, uh, the courses I took uh, at the Kingdom Business School. So I choose because I spent three, uh, two modules there. So I took six courses. So usually uh, from like pricing course and also like tax strategy that relates to my background. So I think it's, uh, in terms of academics, uh, it's a good uh, complementary to uh, HHL course because they have their like tracks and drills in a particular area. Like I take the pricing course, and it's a um, it's very specific on the like consulting part. So you build like a very specific you use very specific knowledge like water for a uh, uh, venue based pricing. So um, and also very uh, practical subject head with the external uh, consulting firm. So you do a like a finer like case study. But the format is similar with the HHL, so you do a lot of group works usually. And the workload, I think it depends on the courses you take. For some courses, it's definitely a lot of uh, work, like pricing, but for some courses, it's, it's chill, it's more like uh, your submitter uh, assessments uh, and also the assignments at uh, Firebase. So it's based the various cost to cost. But in general, I would say it's not so much workload um, because we took the, the MBA courses. And uh, uh, the last part, I would talk about uh, the traveling uh, because um, uh, we located in the, in the southern part of the US and also the eastern part of, of the US. So uh, basically you have a chance to, very easier to travel to like New York, DC, uh, uh, Miami. So a lot of students during the fall break or even the week, long weekend, you can get a like cheap ticket from the flight, uh, from the app, uh, 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 airports so you basically you can uh, very easily to go to these big cities to spend several days there i went to new york during the full break and uh, i think pretty uh, fancy because uh, uh, it's uh, very close by just one half hour from the airport in north carolina so it's very easy to access to these big cities even you um to uh, experience experience the different like uh, the, the, the 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 culture with across the states, like in the big cities and also in the 
a small town in the north part in the, or in the south part. So um, um, in general, I fear um, it's very, um, the experience uh, from international uh, exchange is very useful personally and also professionally. So personally, I think I kind of close the, be closer to the, uh, to the like the U.S., especially the psychological distance. I know more about the the industry information, and also even job opportunities and what's going on like in the particular industry there. So um, uh, by joining the different clubs and also um, um, to experience culture, um, I have a Thanksgiving holidays with the locals there. So um, so it's pretty um, impressive to know. Um, how they celebrate their one of the important festival year. And also professionally, I would say, uh, uh, like starting the year, you can meet a different people, no matter from exchange students, but also the first time MBAs. So they have a diverse like career tracks like uh, ours. So um, like do the consulting firms or do uh, like invest banking. So they have very diverse direction by talking with these people. So basically you can, get a sense of their um, the information from their um, the industry. So it will help, you, help me to like make a choice what I want to go after MBA. So, uh, so basically, uh, and also of course you can expand your network uh, with different people from different countries. So I think it's very value added uh, experience to me. Um, yeah, I think I already exhausted my time, but uh, if you want to know more about the the exchange experience and also um, even the maybe the procedure and also the advantages and disadvantages uh, from uh, like work uh, starting at UNC, please feel feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, John and uh, Marvin and Anna as well for um, sharing your experiences with us. It was very exciting and interesting for me to to learn a little bit more about your time abroad as well and uh, what I think was most important or most interesting was all the thought process you know that went into this there's so many things so many decisions to take do I want to go abroad where do I want to go abroad what do I study so thank you so much for taking us along you know on on your thought process and uh, you know your decision making and what I think is also great to hear that you made the most out of your time abroad both from a well academic perspective that you you know took some classes that fit in well with your interests or your curriculum at HHL, but that you also fully immersed yourself in the countries that you went to. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. Uh, I think that was great to hear. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much and uh, have a lovely evening, everyone. <laughs>